Ay, nako. Ay, ako. Ay, ta, 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 ta. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's go to serious. Let's go serious. Okay. So, let me discuss yung column ko today on Philippine Daily Inquirer. Oh, wag kayo magalit, ah. Wag kayo magalit. Ang title po, Marcos Jr. Presidency, Three Scenarios. Oh, ayan. Magagalit na kayo. Ay, hindi pa tapos. Ay, wala akong sinabi na tapos ng laban. I'm just saying, wag kayo magalala. There will be also an analysis of what could the next... Uh, presidency look like if, let's say, another top contender wins, namely Lenny Robredo, for instance. Oh, so wait lang kayo, wag kayo humuska sa akin kaagad. Ha? But I think it's time to look at really scenarios para hindi naman tayo vague lang yung idea. Like for instance, so yung mga ayo kay Marcos, what are you trying to prevent? Are you trying to prevent another Marcosian 20th century dictatorship? Because I don't think that's gonna happen, right? But does that mean that chill lang, relax na, wag kayo magalala? Not necessarily. That is why meron tayong column, meron tayong analysis at prognosis. At tinitignan po natin dito is three possible scenarios if the surveys are correctly projecting uh, the winner and the current trend lines hold. So, yun na. Marcus Jr. presidency, three possible scenarios. So, no, I would even say possible Marcus Jr. presidency, three possible scenarios no so dito ba lang ha na clarify ko let me first be absolutely clear nothing is final until it's finalized rarely is anything predetermined in the realm of men and women who are extremely susceptible to wild swings in opinion not onion opinion and human agency often trumps social engineering ay daming english ay ano naman sasabihin naman ng no split no split english english alam mo naman tayo alam mo naman tayo O, oh, kahit nga, Gilocano tayo. O, oh, mandamdama. O. Oh. Sige, sige, baba tayo dito. Ah. Basahin nga sa Philippine Daily Inquirer. Ako, ako makapala mukha ako. So, I, I roll, the bo- uh, roll the ball. Okay, ano ba talagang ano natin, concern natin dito? No? So, eto ah, let me be very clear. 700 words lang meron ako dito. So, very limited. At sabi ko ah, eto ah. To understand what could happen next, do not look at Ferdinand Marcos Sr., who was a dictator during the Cold War and 20th century. Mas maganda, not to mas maganda, mas helpful kung titignan natin someone very familiar too. Not a Filipino, but the modern czar of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Because Vladimir Putin, although he will be judged for his unprovoked and disastrous invasion of Ukraine at porang bugbug sila doon sa kanilang invasion, actually, the other thing he should be known for, and he's actually known for by a lot of Russia watchers, is that... He oversaw the construction of 21st century authoritarianism, which has influenced leaders from Hungary, Orban, Turkey, Erdogan, uh, even Trump, you could say, in the U.S., although t- Trump tried, didn't work out. This, America is a country with some sort of rule of law, at least. And the Philippines! Sabi nga ni Tatay Digong, di ba? Putin is his favorite hero. So, Mahalaga na pag-usapan yung influensya ni, Rush, ng, ng, ni Putin sa construction of 21st century style authoritarianism na napakaiba dun sa mga old style dictatorship. Dahil po, yung old style dictatorship, alam natin yung ano dyan, ang, ang drill dyan. You create a false flag operation, yung mga, I don't know, Plaza Miranda, yung mga Reichstag files. And then, ay, may emergency, yung mga komunista, atake na, magkudata tayo. Ayan. So, self-coup, declare martial law, new constitution, alam na natin this. We know the rest of history, except kung puro ka lang TikTok, siguro hindi mo alam masyadong history. Le, <laughs> joke lang. Magbasa naman kayo. Um, so, we know the drill of the 20th century dictatorship. But Putin did it differently. Suave, di ba? Ex-KGB, so he knows what he's doing. One of the ways that he went after the opposition and independent elements in the country, guess anong ginawa niya? 20 years ago. 20 years ago, ha? He used tax evasion cases. He used all sorts of administrative, legal cases against independent media, etc. And he got rid of them. One by one, yan ang ginawa niya. No? Now, in fairness, Lee Kuan Yew in Singapore was doing something similar, although he was using libel, cyber li- uh, libel, wala pang cyber, per libel cases, for instance, against his opponents. So, yan ang tinatawag na soft authoritarianism or soft dictatorship, depending on how you do it. But Putin really invented a kind of a cool version of that. Now, fired Zakaria. A very influential CNN journalist. Well, may kita yung interview namin, for instance, about Trump, Duterte, etc. About him the other year. Um, Fire Zakaria called this illiberal democracy. So democracy only in a sense na meron elections. May elections sa Russia. Nanalo si Putin. At sa pagkalam ko, ayan, 
hindi siya dumadalo dun sa mga debate. So ang ginagawa ni Putin yung mga iba diyan, oh, mga ano, magdebate debate kayo diyan tas manood lang sila popcorn ganun. Pero alam, alam natin sino mananalo. Alam natin sino mananalo. Ang usapan dito is ano yung mga mga tira-tira na pwede ibigay dun sa mga ibang kandidato na ano, medyo nag-effort na tumakbo, di ba? And then you have few really brave opposition people like Alexei Navalny who really tried to challenge, of course, but under impossible conditions. So there's democracy only in a sense that may frequent elections. But alam natin who's gonna win and alam natin who's gonna lose. And uh, the question is only margins, no? Uh, and the other thing, of course, is the populist strongman appeal of Vladimir Putin. He kind of gave this cool image. I'm a strong leader. I'm democratically elected. And try to portray all his opponents and rivals, etc. as Matuta of the West, as extension of Western uh, imperialism, etc. And this has worked very well in Russia for quite a long time. Until, of course, more recently, na medyo sumosobra na. Kasi medyo Marcos senior level na 20, 21 years na si Putin yata. Almost 22 years na siya in power. That does things to you, no? Now, this is relevant because if you look at it, a lot of modern authoritarian systems, they don't do the old dictatorship, shut down all media, pakulong lahat ng rivals kagad, executions, right, purge and all. Ah, hindi na uso yan. That's not how they do it. They do it more subtle, more step-by-step, step, more calibrated, and then there's a veneer of legality, cyber, libel, ay, libel issues, tax evasion issues, etc., etc. So they can use all of those kind of issues. No? So for me, if you're worried about authoritarianism, this is the kind of authoritarianism you have to think about. Not necessarily the 20th century style dictatorship. So right off the bat, let me say this. If Marcos Jr. becomes the next president, it's not going to be another martial law and I love that. It's very, very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. Of course, anything can happen like super black swan. But we're talking about gray swans here. We're talking about probabilistic wild situations. Not out of, the, out of this world situations, right? Uh, not completely black swans, but gray swans. Now, I discussed three possible scenarios b based on three different variables. No? Unang una, mahalaga po yung margin of victory. And this also flies for anyone. No? If, if, not Le if not Marcos, even for Lenny, mahalaga po yung margin of victory. Because your margin of victory ascertains a certain degree of legitimacy and more importantly, gives you a certain degree of personal de destiny and, and, and sense of self-assuredness. No? Mahalaga yan. So if Bombong wins the same way that it was closed in 2016 that he lost, no? then it could have the kind of moderating effect that it had on Lenny, for instance. I mean, let's be honest. I think Lenny would have been twice more fiery if her victory over Marcus was not so raised or thin. She won. She's duly elected vice president of the republic. It has been confirmed multiple times by the Supreme Court. Ilan pa bang talong kailangan ng kabila? Uh, but, you know, when the margins are so thin, it does something to your, your self-confidence, your sense of destiny, and your legitimacy, and therefore your political capital. Malaga yung margin. Pangalawa, factional politics and personalistic jostling within the ruling regime. Katulad ng sinabi ko, if Bombo Marcos becomes an ex-president, he'll owe a lot of that to Sara Duterte and the Sara all effect in Mindanao. Because Bombo Marcos was 13, 14, 15 percent. Before Sarah dropped out. Once Sarah dropped out, he picked up the 25-30%. Put it together, we're already talking about 40-50%. With some bandwagoning here and there, you can even go to 60-70%, right? So, Sarah all effect was very, very significant in allowing Marcos to be the dominant, dominant candidate that he is supposed to be based on the surveys. No. And yung, uh, so, so, so yung mangyayaring internal, internal negotiations, internal jostling, internal, uh, you know, compromises or tensions and all. Sa pagitan nila Sara, uh, mga, mga Arroyo, Romualdez, Marcos, all of that will be very important. So it could become, I'll discuss it, a consociational leadership. But the third important factor is, ano naman ang ambag ng mga international powers and partners? Katulad ng Amerika, wala pa nga silang ambassador dito. Kamusta na mga dyan? Beijing, meron silang bagong ambassador. I'm not sure he's doing as well yet as the former Chinese ambassador, uh, Zhang, I think. But let's see. But also Brussels, the European Union, the British, uh, the Japanese, the Australians, and even the Russians uh, could have some sort of influence about how our next president will behave and will uh, you know, handle his power and presidency. So these three factors are, element, uh, are important. Accordingly, I came up with three scenarios. Again, this is very preliminary analysis. At ayoko i-overdo yan 
because hindi pa tapos yung laban, marami pang pwede mangyari. So I don't want to be accused of, you know, like, oh, ito na, you're preempting the the result. But I think it's okay to do some sort of scenario building because this is just um, the rigor, right? This is uh, the rigor. Uh, even you, you talking about the uh, political analysis. Uh, okay, uh, okay, let's go back here. Three scenarios. So the first scenario is what no one, very few people are expecting. But this is the scenario whereby Marcus goes maximalist, right? Not, not Marcus Sr., but probably closer to what Putin was 10, 20 years ago, right? In this scenario, he transmogrifies into a much more assertive and ambitious political figure quite different from the laid-back avancular image that he has today. Let's not forget, yung huling picture ni uh, Senator Bongo Marcos before they left Marcos, ah, before, sorry, they, they left Malacanang, di ba? Naka-military fatigue siya, right? And he has some, I think, special forces or army training. And we know he was a relative hardliner towards the end, the twilight days of the Marcos uh, uh, dictatorship. So there is that side to him, which, of course, no one talks about or people have forgotten, but... You know, I won't underestimate uh, Senator Marcos. I think he has a feisty and strong side that, that has allowed him to pay, you know, be cool and all of that throughout the years, calm and collected. But, you know, once you win with big margins, 60, 70, 80%, that does things to you. Now, to give a kind of a other example, I mean, Putin, one reason Putin was put into power, according to Masha Gessen, uh, in the late 1990s was they thought uh, lang madali siya manipulate and all of that, not knowing deep inside he actually has his own ambition and he was very self-certain and had a clear vision for Russia. So never underestimate people who seem laid back and, and avancular or, 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 or passive because once they're really in a position of power, you know, they could show a different side to us. Now, if you're a supporter, you would like that. If you're not a supporter, then you will have concerns about that. So I call that the maximalist scenario. Now, the second scenario is you can call it the consociational slash cartel scenario. This is a situation whereby the margin is not as big. Let's say Marcus wins 40%, 45%. Other candidates come to 25%, 30%. Uh, uh, And then Sarah does very well. Let's say she wins 60%, 70%, big win as vice presidency. So Sarah comes in as a very, very confident vice president, feeling she played a very important role in the prospective victory of Marcus. That's why tune out the other Hey, we're doing scenario building. Let's do proper analysis. Because I ako yung ano lang, ha? vague masyado. Like you say, what are you scared of? And then people give you an idea of the past when the future could be quite different. Now, in this scenario, in this consociational slash cartel scenario, it will be a more predictable, gradualist, consensus-based approach. No? Kung saan Marcos has to uh, work things through, consult with other factions, etc. before they come up with key decisions. But the final scenario is what you can call the minimalist scenario. This is a scenario whereby the margin of victory is very, very narrow. Very, very narrow. Let's say Lenny picks up, she brings it to 30, 35%. Bonbon comes down to around 35, 40%. Then, of course, that means Isco had to pick up. So Isco comes to 25, 30%. So quite a close fight. And in this scenario, you also have a very strong cohesive opposition. So even if the opposition may have lost quite narrowly or not with decisive margin on the part of front runner, they have a strong movement. They have an inspiring leadership. They are cohesive. They're essentially everything that opposition was not in 2016 when President Duterte won. In this scenario, I think Bo Marcos will be much more pragmatic, much more calibrated in how he approaches uh, his presidency. So in short, there's nothing predetermined about what a Marcos Jr. presidency could look like. It will really depend on the three factors I explained. First of all, the margin of victory and the impact it will have on the sense of self and sense of mission of Marcus Jr. Second, internal factional politics, especially when it comes to, uh, vi- uh, to vice, potentially vice president uh, Sara Duterte. And third, external pressure. Anong gagawin ng America, yung mga powers, yung partners, yung China, yung Russia, etc. So these three elements are very important. Now, let me close on this note because this is very important. Nothing is predetermined with either these elections, so many things could still change in the coming weeks, or even if, should the current frontrunner win with his presidency. Therefore, the struggle for the future of the Philippines is far from over. Do not only look at what's going to happen sa election na ito. Huwag nyo lang tignan ka agad yung mangyari the first hundred days after. Ang struggle for democracy is a continuous process. And even if Lenny wins, she will have to have a strong movement behind her so that pwede niya ma-overwhelm and overcome Yung mga trapo who will oppose structural reforms, progressive reforms, progressive appointments, so on and so forth. Alright? So yon. 
So yon, so yon, so yon. Okay. This is how you do analysis, right? Put aside for a moment partisanship, uh, your emotions, your feelings, your misgivings. Look at the possible scenarios based on the lay of the land at saka yung alignment of forces. O yan, pag seryosa ako, di na kayo nanonood ah. Wow, konti lang stars ah. <laughs> Sige, next naman, scenarios under Lenny. What kind of presidency we can Tignan natin. Baka biglang, ano, talagang bias itong mga to. Nasaan na yung mga meta? Kameta? Puro mga kakamping dito eh. Saan yung mga kameta naman dyan? Yung mga kameta, nasaan kayo dyan? Ano na, ano na, ano na, ano na, ano na, ano na, ano na? Boom! Nasaan na kayo dyan? Ayan, sabi ni Alba, purong reklamo yung opposition. Eh kung wala naman palpak siguro, wala rin masyadong reklamo, di ba po? Wala akong sinasabi, sinasabi ko lang. That's my opinion. Respect my opinion. 